Welcome to California High Speed Rail episode number 10, the final episode. Which means, to all you new viewers, you have 9 other episodes to check out. For this episode, we're going to talk about California High Speed Rail Phase 2. We already talked about Phase 2 San Diego to Los Angeles, but this time we're talking about Merced to Sacramento. Please exit through the rear door. Doors open. We start off at Merced Station. I've actually already talked about the Merced Station in previous videos, so make sure to check those out. The alignment north of Merced mostly follows the Union Pacific tracks. The section from Merced to Modesto is almost entirely on that alignment. This means that California High Speed Rail will have a station right in downtown Modesto. Just north of Modesto, it breaks off the UP alignment. It continues this way to avoid Stockton. Stockton station is located just off of State Road 99. This is one of the rare cases where the High Speed Rail station is actually in the worse placement than the existing conventional rail station. The only other station that's like that for California High Speed Rail is... California High Speed Rail will be replacing the existing San Joaquin service, which means that downtown Stockton will be losing that north to south connectivity. Fortunately, Ace Rail will be replacing the service. But that's a whole other topic for another series. Shortly after Stockton, the California High Speed Rail alignment struggles to stay along any other existing alignment, which means there's going to have to be a lot of right of way acquisition which may slow down the project a little bit. Luckily, after this section, the California High Speed Rail alignment follows the UP alignment all the way up to Sacramento. This and the Merced to Modesto section will hands down be the easiest sections to build. California High Speed Rail will use the existing Sacramento Valley Station. This will connect to Sacramento's RT light rail system, which will serve as high capacity transit to get riders around Sacramento. There is connection to the Amtrak Coast Starlight, Amtrak's $47.3 million annual money pit, and there's also connection to the California Zephyr, Amtrak's $74.8 million money pit. And yeah, that's the northern section of phase 2. With that being said, if I earned your like and subscription, I love you, and if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. Just kidding, I wasn't going to end our final episode on that. But really, there's not much to talk about about this section. So let's talk a little bit about Link 21 and what that means for this project. Link 21 is like an official, unofficial California High Speed Rail project. Think about the Phase 2 of California High Speed Rail as Phase 2A and this as Phase 2B. The purpose of the project is to link Northern California with passenger rail. Dozens of transportation agencies and authorities are working together to coordinate a future plan for passenger rail in Northern California. One of the plans, and the largest plan, is to have the secondary rail crossing underneath the San Francisco Bay. Now the project can go two ways, because two different technologies are being studied for this tunnel. The first one being conventional standard gauge regional rail, and the other one being Hyperloop. God damn! The other technology is BART, and while BART is great, BART already goes underneath the bay. A secondary BART tunnel can increase frequencies and add new stations, but let's be honest, a conventional regional rail tunnel will have so much more impact on the region. On top of that, it completes goals of multiple rail agencies, not just BART. So this is where I believe we're heading. We start out in the Salesforce Transit Center in downtown San Francisco. I've already talked about the planned initial operations for the Salesforce Transit Center in the last video, and we had a fellow stowaway member Jonathan give us a tour, so that was pretty cool. In that video, we talked about how the Salesforce Transit Center will serve as a terminus in its initial operation. However, Link 21 would turn the Salesforce Transit Center into a through station. Yeah, and this is going to create a huge problem. A lot of you guys mentioned it in the comments section of the last video. And while I hinted at it when mentioning the fact that California High Speed Rail and Caltrain aren't trying to share the same platforms, I was waiting to mention it all in this video. Alright, alright. So you may have noticed, the Salesforce Transit Center only has three platforms and six tracks. Two of those platforms, like I said before, will be for Caltrain. One of the platforms is going to be for California High Speed Rail. That means that two platforms will be low-level island platforms and one platform is going to be a high-level island platform. Now this should be okay for initial operations. Even with Caltrain and California High Speed Rail maxing out their services at 12 trains per hour, 8 of them being Caltrain and 4 of them being California High Speed Rail, the station's capacity is still sufficient enough to run that type of service, which according to Deutsche Bahn would be at 90% capacity. But with the completion of Link 21, this would possibly see these additional services added. The Capital Quarter, the San Joaquin service, maybe even the California Zephyr, if 
Amtrak ever gets rid of the Superliners. Seriously though, these cars are going 40 to 50 years old now, and the design is 70 years old. I know that Amtrak said that they're going to replace them, but let's get something ADA accessible please. <clears throat> yeah, but if any of these other services run into the station, there's going to be a big problem. If both Caltrain and California High Speed Rail are operating out of the station at 90% capacity, no new services can be added. Hmm. Maybe the 4th and King Street station will be useful after all. Okay, now hear me out, hear me out. What if... <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, what if the 4th and King Street station could be used for all Caltrain and California High Speed Rail services that are terminating in San Francisco? With the Salesforce Transit Center used for California High Speed Rail and possible Caltrain through services. This way we can offload some of the service capacity issues at the Salesforce Transit Center so that additional services such as the San Joaquin service in the Capitol Corridor can be provided. Now I know some of you might be like, Oh wow, Banks Rail, that actually makes sense. Or, Yeah, Banks Rail, I like that idea, but maybe we could do it this way. Yeah, let me stop you right there. All of these ideas are bad. And this is something I realized when reading the comments from the last video. Why are we trying to create solutions to the future problems of stations that aren't even built yet? Think about it. Think about how silly that is. The station and the extension isn't even built. We have time to address these problems beforehand. It's just so good goofy to me that all these authorities, companies, and agencies, the Trans Bay Joint Powers Authority, the California High Speed Rail Authority, Caltrain, and Deutsche Bahn are going into this multi-billion dollar project knowing that in 10 years after the completion of the station, the capacity of the station won't be sufficient enough for their needs. Alright. Well, anyways, let's talk about some of the proposed alignments for Link 21. I'm only going to go over two of them because those two are the only ones that actually make San Francisco to Sacramento a possibility for California High Speed Rail. But just know that there are four different proposed alignments for a tunnel underneath the bay. The first proposed alignment turns west in a tunnel underneath the bay towards Alameda. There's a possible underground station in Alameda under Webster Street. After that, there's an underground Y underneath Amtrak's Oakland maintenance facility. This Y allows for trains to continue from Oakland to Emeryville the way they currently do. On the south side of the Y, the Oakland Jack London station will be moved underground. On the north side, there's a station underneath West Oakland connecting to the existing elevated BART station. After this station, the alignment rises out of the tunnel near Clawson and continues until it connects with the existing one south of Emeryville. This alignment, while circuitous, does include a station in Alameda, which is pretty cool. Alright, next alignment. The next alignment has a direct tunnel from the Salesforce Transit Center to West Oakland without stopping in Alameda. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. This alignment is obviously the cheaper one. Now you may be wondering, how will California High Speed Rail get from Oakland to Sacramento now? Well, with the Capital Corridor, of course. Yeah, so the Capital Corridor Joint Powers Authority has plans to not just electrify the Capital Corridor, but to upgrade it to 125 miles per hour and possibly even 150. Now these are plans for around 2050, but I bet California High Speed Rail can speed this up. Now this route for California High Speed Rail would be very important because the current Sacramento to San Francisco route taking California High Speed Rail is 200 miles longer than driving It would take about an hour and 50 minutes, which is 20 minutes slower than driving. So yeah, that's why to me, this seems like an obvious phase 3. So yeah, that's gonna wrap up the truth about California High Speed Rail series. What are my thoughts on the entire project? I'll leave that topic for another mega video. In my Brightline mega video, I said get the video to a thousand likes and I'll do a California High Speed Rail mega video. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get there. But it's okay, because with this video, if you get this video to a thousand likes, then I'll do a two hour long California High Speed Rail video. I mean, without that video, this would be the last time I talk about this project directly for a for a pretty long time, not even gonna lie. But if you like this series anyways, just go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It helps a lot. And one last thing before I end things out, make sure you are subscribed. And I'm not saying that because like, oh yeah, make sure you're subscribed. No, like make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to post a YouTube poll on my channel tomorrow that will ask you guys what high speed rail projects you would like me to talk about next. I try to make this channel as interactive as possible by having you guys do these polls so that you guys can choose the topics that you guys are interested in. But the channel can't be interactive if you're not subscribed.
when I started my Brightline Florida series, I put a poll in and you all say California High Speed Rail. So we did the California High Speed Rail series. When I started the California High Speed Rail series, I put a poll in and you guys said the Acela. So we're going to do the Acela series next. That's going to be the next series. So when I do the first episode of the next series, which is the Acela, I'm going to put a poll in again. YouTube is weird because they don't recommend the polls the same way they recommend videos. So if you're not subscribed, you're most likely not going to get the poll recommendation. All right, but here are your four options. Brightline West, Texas Central, Amtrak Midwest Wolverine Service, and Amtrak's Northeast Regional. The length of these series vary depending on how large the projects actually are. So yeah, whatever project you choose might be the project that we spend the next five months talking about. With that being said, if I earned your like and subscription, I love you. And if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. Thank